This computer was $30 on eBay, so what's wrong with it, and is it worth saving? Can we turn it into something useful and avoid casting it to the ever-growing island of misfit e-waste? Once again, I was browsing computers in the four parts or not working section of eBay. Why would I be doing that? Because I'm sick, okay? I'm sick! And much like the band Disturbed, I am down with the sickness. While I was feeding my addiction, I mean browsing, I came across this $30 computer. This is the old Elite Desk 800 G1 and it's the USDT form factor, which is a sort of lost form factor that I've done a video on. Link in the description. Hint hint. That means watch it! That is, if you'd like to. No pressure. Now typically this computer is pretty cheap, though usually closer to 40 or 50 dollars. So why was this one especially cheap? Well, true to the name of the not working category, it has a problem. According to the listing, the BIOS is locked, which most likely means there's an administrator password for the BIOS. On these older devices, that's usually a really simple fix. So we might have an especially good deal on our hands. We're going to break this down, we'll go over the kind of specs it has, why I think it's a good deal for what it came with. We'll also talk about what we can do with a computer like this, and obviously all of that is dependent upon actually fixing the problem, which I don't really anticipate is going to be much of an issue, which again feeds into why I think this was a pretty good find. So the first thing we always try when we have a computer issue. 90% of the time it works every time. All right, I'll be shocked if the pool noodle method didn't work, but if that is the case, we'll explore other solutions. Let's try to boot this up and see what happens. While we're hooking this up, it's a good time to note that this model of PC does require one of these external brick type power supplies. Now, I had one of these around because I have a few different models that are similar to this, and I think I bought it for like $15. So that's something to keep in mind, uh, just on the off chance that you might be looking at these. So I started up the computer, and as you can see, it won't let me enter the standard boot menu or the BIOS or anything at all. Typically you hit escape during the startup, and it'll take you to a screen where you select different options, like the boot menu or enter the BIOS. Here it just immediately took me to this uh, prompt for the password. Now like I said, this should be easy though you may have seen in the past how things normally work out for me. There's actually a password jumper on the motherboard. It's just a couple pins with a jumper over top of them. This one's labeled PSWD for password. Sometimes it's labeled PWD or Clear CMOS. Just depends on the type of board it is. And basically what we want to do is just take this jumper and just move it over one pin. And once we've done that, we're going to restart and when there's only two pins I don't know if it would make more sense to pull it completely off. On a lot of systems there's three to four pins and the jumper uh, you want to move it so it's only over two as opposed to like all three but we'll see how this goes with just shifting it by one pin. That was so easy that it was borderline anticlimactic and I'm kind of bored by it. But let's get into the specs. Was it even worth the price and what can you do with a $30 computer. Well, retro emulation, of course, and if you watch the channel, you probably knew where I was going with that. Before we get into the specs, a couple side notes. First of all, we get these little bonus hard drive caddy screws, which if you've messed with any old HP computers, you know those are pretty useful. And another kind of important note is actually surprisingly came with a sticker with an official Windows license key, which again, that's a per seller type thing, but that in itself adds value to this machine. Since we're installing a Linux-based operating system for emulation on this, 
I'll be free to use that key on future builds or upgrades. But I said let's talk specs, so let's talk chair desk. Luckily, retro emulation, depending on what you're trying to do, it usually doesn't, it's not too crazy demanding. It doesn't take too much. So I think we'll get pretty decent performance out of this, even though it's nothing crazy or special, nothing to write home about. We have eight gigabytes of RAM. This is DDR3 1600 megahertz. Not great, but again, $30 computer. The processor, I believe, is the i5 4590S. I'll double check that when I'm in the system. I'm not going to pull the CPU fan off right now. But the i5 4590S is a quad core processor that runs at 3.7 gigahertz turbo boost speed. And the S indicates that it is a low power variant of the processor, which draws less electricity. And those are the bare bones important specs. I'm going to take a 2.5 inch SSD that I already have Bodicera loaded onto and I'm going to drop it into this little caddy here and once you screw everything into this caddy it just kind of drops into place then you lock it in there's no cables for that it just slides right into place and another thing to note the, because of its more compact size this could also be a pretty decent media server if you're into doing that kind of thing but let's see what we can do emulation wise all right so everything booted up without issue I'm almost a little disappointed that it wasn't more difficult to fix just because I kind of like the challenge of actually fixing something up but ultimately I think we're going to have a pretty good computer at a really good deal the game is Kingdom Hearts 2 and I'm just kind of running around a little bit jumping around working the camera and it is consistently running at 50 FPS a very occasional dip down to 49 which is like nothing which by the way I've never seen it run higher than 50 FPS so that's that's pretty good. I don't think PlayStation 2 is going to be an issue. This is pretty smooth. We're going to jump over to PSP, which though it typically might be less demanding, we do have the option to upscale here. And I found that two or three times upscaling on the PSP is usually more demanding than the PS2. All right, I'm at three times rendering and three times upscale. It looks really nice. It's way sharper than the, its standard quality. I've only seen one dip and it dipped down to 99.9%. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know how much it comes through just recording the screen directly but this it actually does look like really nice it's really sharp really not bad at all all right yeah for the price they're looking pretty nice rhyme not intentional again a part of me wishes this was a little more difficult to fix just because i like that challenge but i don't think that's a very fair complaint that it was too easy to fix and too good of a deal so i'm pretty happy with the system overall and i'm really happy with this find it's hard to beat something like this for 30 dollars and this will make an awesome emulation device but so that should do it for this one thank you to everyone who's watching I really appreciate it as always, and I will catch you later.